Hey, what's going on guys? Roni Boney here. Thank you for stopping by for Halo Talk Episode 6 with Weapons Grade. What's up, man? What's going on guys? Weapons Grade back at it again. Halo Talk Episode 6. Exciting. Roni, Exciting we got stuff. a lot to talk about today, don't we, man? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We just got off like a three-hour play session together. We had some great fun. Um, and there's uh, there's some things we'll talk about uh, that we, we got had up to. Yeah, I had a that blast, was, man, as well. I was, I'm excited, man. Yeah. Excited. Halo's feeling a um, little bit more, a uh, little bit more positive. I think I can speak for both of us when I say we're both growing as creators and, and just trying to look for the positives, really, in Halo. Seeing as this pandemic has gone on for a long time, it's uh, it's yeah. not good to be in a very negative mindset regarding Halo. One of the things I always said, Roni, um, right now there really isn't much to play, like at least in the first person shooter department. Mm -hmm. uh, everything, you know, there's no new games. You know, Cyberpunk was kind of a dud. Um, so I, I wanted a game to play. And I'm just like, I have Halo to play. You know, mm -hmm. why don't I play that? And I went back and between like the crossplay and the community, um, it's kind of growing. It I is. Would say. It is. And, not, um, not as much as I'd like it to be, but it is growing, which is. Right. I think it was a 2% increase in player base now. Some may say that that's not a lot, but look, for me, in I can other feel words, the difference. It's no longer rock bottom anymore. Yeah, ex exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're, we're out of that rock bottom period. Actually, we made it out of that little that MCC drought. Like they're finally, you know, they got the games on there, one through four now. Um, mm. You know, mod supports coming. Um, a bunch Whenever of that comes, a lot of players are going to rotate. And, and yeah, they have to. They have to. Um, but getting started, Rooney. Um, oh man. Yeah, we had a few topics anyway that we had prepared for, for you guys for this talk. So uh, the first one that I really wanted to, to focus on was uh, active versus concurrent players in MCC and Halo Infinite. So in the past, yeah. myself and Weapons Grade both did a video critiquing news that came out saying that Halo 5 had the most active player base of any Halo game since Halo 3, uh, which was inflating figures. Active can mean you logged into the game to check out the, the monthly update or to, to buy a rec pack. So for us, it's something, and for me especially, it's something quite close to my heart that I want MCC and Halo itself, uh, MCC and Infinite, uh, to have more concurrent players than active players. You know, to have a, to have it. Well, that that would be nearly impossible, but to have a decent percentage of concurrent players um, returning to the game and sticking with the game and constantly playing the game, as opposed to just someone logging in for for two hours and then not logging in again for about three months. Yeah, there's certainly a difference between somebody, like you said, just logging in for five minutes just to check out an update over the weekend that dropped, like for you know a rec pack or something, and yeah. then them counting it and going, oh, okay, that's that counts as three million people because they just logged in for ten minutes. Exactly. Um, so you know, active players being that people were actually playing, like me and Roni Boni, we just played a three-hour session of MCC. They would see that probably as like us actually playing mm. rather than just. You know, we were actually actively playing the game. Um, another thing too, Roni, um, MCC, the population actually, I forgot to mention this earlier, is larger than Halo 5's on the Xbox version. Wow. So that's actually not I would believe really news, that. but some interesting, uh, some interesting fact I came across looking at the Xbox store, because you know how it lists like the most popular games and stuff. Yeah. Um, MCC has finally surpassed Halo 5 on the Xbox version, so that's without crossplay. Which is that's, fantastic. I think that's yeah. impressive. I think that's just from, from you know, Game Pass. From Game Pass probably is a huge because what MCC is free. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's that, free that's on Game Pass. Yeah. Oh, I'm playing it. Um, what do you, you know, think about Rony, Halo 5 coming to PC? Because there's been a lot of people on. I see it mostly on Twitter. Saying that they'd love for Halo Five to make it over to over to PC. A lot of, a lot of the, I guess the more three four three era Halo fans really enjoy Halo Four on PC. It's not for me. I played a lot of Halo Four back in the day and decided that it wasn't, it wasn't a Halo game that I wanted to consistently play. But look for the people that do want to play Halo Four, and I think that Halo Five, in my opinion, I think they should put Halo Five onto PC for the people that want to play it. There's what's the harm? Yeah. Um... So you're saying you, you don't mind if they put it in? No, I right? wouldn't. I wouldn't mind. Yeah. Um, like in the MCC? Not in, not into the MCC. I think it should be its mm -hmm. own title. 
I oh, think, they, I think they should separate it away from the MCC. Uh, maybe have a launch functionality from MCC, but it's. I think they should separate it from the MCC, but but give people what they want because it's the only Halo title at the moment now that is not on PC, and yeah, it makes sense yeah, for I, them to put it on there. I I, I could see it com coming on in the future, definitely. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think all Halo games, that's where they're going. You know what I mean? That sort yeah. of unifying um, console, you know, PC platform. Xbox is really doing exclusives anymore. You know that's what I mean? the best so, part of actually uh, Xboxes uh, with their new their new consoles and Game Pass especially. I think that's the best part of their new their new plan to try and take over this console generation. That they have Game Pass, which is amazing. I can't believe people are saying Game Pass is bad. It's fantastic. Game Pass is amazing value. Yeah. Amazing value. Yeah, and I, I'm sure I, some people will will scrutinize it now in the comment section, but I think Game Pass is a win for for gamers. Yeah, just um. There's like a deal. I don't know if you guys did it yet. Uh, I don't know if it expired, but like you get that one dollar, three mm -hmm. months for free. That actually stacks on top of your Xbox Live Gold. So like if you already had a year going, it would add three months to a year. So you would get, you know, oh, Game great. Pass for for that long for a dollar. So everybody was using that sort of. So I had Game Pass for I think about a year and a couple months. I think games themselves are going to start moving onto those subscription-based models, and then. The games themselves will have battle passes, that kind of thing, uh, in order to yeah. incentivize spending, which I'm not going to spend a dime. But that's, look, if that's what people want to do, um, I don't exactly agree with it entirely. But if it gives cheap games to people that may not be able to afford several $60 games per year, that's fine. That's fine with me. Yeah, yeah. I know that might be a hot take. I see that word floating around Twitter a lot hot take. But uh, that's, that's my hot take on, on Games Pass. Mm, yeah, Roni, I, I wanted to also bring up and sort of shift the focus to MCC here. Mm. Um, so we know, you know, like a season five, I believe, is coming out for MCC February or whatever. And, you know, they're, I guess there's a lot of controversy. They're adding armor, 343 armor, I should say, in the Halo 3. A lot of people are a little upset about that. Mm. What What are your feelings sort of on that? So um, I know they're adding like a toggleable button, yeah. sort of that you can, yeah. Um, so I played a lot of Halo Online. They're Halo Online armors. Um, my most video for my most viewed video for Halo is Halo Online gameplay. I love Halo Online. I, I think it was a fantastic version of Halo Three. I think it's probably the best Halo game that has technically not released, uh, but has been available for players over the last ten years. I have no problem if someone wants to have some crazy armor. But I also see why people would want that as a toggleable function. You know, they want to see Halo 3 historically as Halo 3 released. And that's fine, that's fair enough. And I'm glad that 343 did that. But I think there's a lot of people that are nitpicking at the moment. Apparently the Under Armour suit is not changing. Um, and people are saying, oh, the Under Armour is not changing, so that's terrible, it's awful. I don't give a shit. I don't know how you even see that Under Armour when you're playing the game. I'm not looking at Under Armour when I'm playing the game. I'm just looking at what the other guy's doing to see if I can kill him before he kills me. Um, so yeah. I, I think it's a moot point. I think it's a non-issue. And I think we yeah. actually need to move towards legitimate issues that we still have in MCC and that are probably going to help dictate the development and the reception of Halo Infinite. I. I in my take on it, um, you know, at first I was kind of alarmed too. I can kind of get the reaction. I was like, what? Like, what are they doing? Are we going to see microtransactions and a bunch of other crap and all this nasty armor that will kind of taint Halo 3? You know, with that 343 stuff on there. Mm. Um, are they really going in that direction, I thought? And then I'm like, you know what? You know, it was I played a match of Halo 3 ODST, like that recon SWAT mode and you have like the Halo 3 ODST pistol and then it was then I realized I was like this is adding content to Halo 3 is cool now granted you know it is 343 armor it doesn't look as cool but again it is toggleable so they kind of you know did that for you guys so I think it kind of worked itself out in a way you know yeah. what I mean well the community and, uh, actually was listened to this time so I think yeah if we can build on this and if the community can take a step back and decide that 
you know, it, we, they, people brought up legitimate points, and I think it was across the entire community. You saw a lot of the larger Halo YouTubers also say that this does not fit the art style. And a point that we've made historically has been that larger YouTubers in this community can actually be a platform for change. And that proved it with these armors. So I'd like to say well done to those YouTubers for, for having the community's real desires um, at the forefront because it made a difference. It did make a difference. So I, I think yourself and myself are, are nearly, at this point, outcasts. Uh, but I'm trying to work my way. I think we're trying to work our way back in, being a lot more rational, a lot more fair. Uh, but yeah. for these larger Halo YouTubers, I'd just like to say to you guys, if any of you guys are watching, you made a difference. You can make a difference. And being honest and listening to the community and seeing you know, seeing the points from all aspects of the community, from the from the side that just likes classic to the side that just loves 343 stuff, I think you guys really have the means to make change. And again, I'm just repeating myself, but but thank you for, for some of those YouTubers for actually for doing their part in helping alleviate this issue. Certainly, certainly. Yeah. I, I just wanted to say, just like a little touch up on that, Rooney. I um, also like, tried out some of the new skins on MCC so like I guess you can put on like the gold sniper now and, like you can put on the gold warhog and all that stuff and yeah. I just wanted to say that I actually um, approve of that kind of innovation and change in Halo 3 and that I, I see it similar as to uh, just a big mo a mod slash sandbox and mode like Skyrim Halo Absolutely. 3 is just you know what I mean that's what's yeah, going like, to happen when mod support is released if people are complaining about Halo Online armors. Well, when I played Halo Online, I customized all my weapons and what they looked like. So I had, it, it played like Halo 3, Halo Online, but I had the Reach Sniper, I had the Reach Shotgun, I had I had the CE pistol as the base pistol for Halo 3. So you were able to customize it however you wanted to, and it made the game seem fresher again. And that's what people right. need to look at. It just, it's a cosmetic way of making the game seem fresher. This. And it, it works, I think. It works. Like, when you put on that gold skin for that sniper, it, it looks pretty badass. Yeah, you know it looks I mean? good. Yeah. And I, I'm kind of eager to get some battle rifle skins. I don't know how, but, like, I'm going that extra step to look up how to do that because, you know, there's actually some sort of incentive to progress. Like, I know they're adding, I guess, um, if you reach a certain rank in um, ranked games like level 20 or 15 or something you unlock certain armor or chess pieces yeah like that that's certainly a good step in the right direction of getting players you know rewarded for doing things yeah no I agree I, I also think they need to have another method as well of unlocking those skins a lot of people are saying well look just get good get to level 25 or level 20 whatever, whatever it is in ranked for for you guys I have a full-time job <laughs> I work 10 to 12 hours a day. I don't have time to come home and sweat my ass off playing ranked. So if there was a method of unlocking that without the rank, say it's double the amount of, of points on their season pass system, I, I, I would prefer having different ways of, of unlocking those skins. Because I, I can understand people's points saying, look, I don't, I don't care about ranked or I don't have enough time to play ranked. I still want this skin. I get it. Exclusivity is something that's cool. Someone's saying, look, I got to level 25. Look how cool I am. Or I got to level 50. There should definitely be incentives for getting to level 50. But for just the average Joe who wants to experience a game, um, I think, yeah, there should be a different method. should be two methods yeah. of achieving them. It's fair. I agree. And that, that would actually be sort of staying through to Halo 3's way of progression. You know what I mean? How Halo 3 had, well, they had the skulls. They had the... Yeah. They had uh, ranks, kind of like, I think you reach level sergeant something, master sergeant, you got like the rogue helmet. Yeah, and gun, then, you know, sergeant, they also yeah. had the social XP later on. So mm. they really, yeah. They brought so. in a lot of systems. Halo 3, in my mind, anyway, had the best social progression system that was also simultaneously tied to your rank. So when I was a brigadier grade 3, I couldn't wait. I had to start a, I had to start a new account uh, so that I could finally get a general um, and then I would have if I had spent enough time on that account which is my current account that I use um, I would have gotten that to general but I was just so burnt out uh, but still look they, they had a system if I wanted to to keep progressing I could have I could have achieved higher ranks etc it gave me incentive right. to play um, so I think just 343 needs to do that and uh, on, on that I think 
it kind of bridges us into our second topic, which is rotational playlists that should be permanent uh, in MCC at the moment and Halo mm-hmm. Infinite. Uh, there's a distinct lack of, of Halo playlists in MCC. It's very vanilla. There's snipers, there's, you know, there's doubles, there's free for all, there's, uh, you know, the, these big team battle, invasion, that kind of thing. But there's nothing right. that really, you know, kind of grabs your eye. You know, where's multi-team? That's my favorite playlist. Where is multi-team? That's it's a great way of playing. Look, if if there's eight people, it's my top three. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, or even a larger multi-team, like lo- like big team multi-team. That could be amazing. Imagine yeah. that eight teams of two. They could totally do something like that. It would be amazing. Uh, the amount of people that would come back to the game. I think MCC has. We have the forge from four Halo games. It, there, this can absolutely be done with new maps. They need to use the resources that are already built in the game to improve the game and to create fresh content. Yeah. Um, I know that one example of that they recently did, and it, it's not really anything significant, but I guess they had added like four Forge maps recently and they wanted like the community to review it. Hmm. That's sort of the direction me and Roni are talking about when we say that Halo has essentially an infinite amount of possibilities and content in it because of forge like he said you can build any game type any anything i was just talking to roni uh, earlier we're playing invasion on reach you can literally if you wanted to if 343 wanted to they can build an invasion game mode for halo 3 and just you know for the elites just buff up their settings or give them extra speed boost or whatever it may be you can have halo 3 invasion like you can make experimental. You can take it to that next level. Mm. And I, I really hope that they start thinking outside the box. Like, we have all these tools here that we can use in Halo. It's here. The foundation is here. The gameplay is already good. Let's use it. But you but mentioned I, Recon I really, Slayer. That's that's a complete example of, of what you're Recon saying. Recon Slayer. Recon Slayer, perfect example. You know, that's actually a great example of new content being introduced into legacy halo title because mm. they just added out of the blue odst guns you got the you know the whatever the suppressed uh, smg that and that pistol they're so fun to use in multiplayer i i was having a blast um yeah. so yeah it's i mean we've played these games for a long time for 13 years i've been playing halo 3 it is nice to see just a tweak just a small difference just a small difference, and anyone who says that it's bad and that it ruins the game's legacy look, you're 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 just you're. I don't agree. I just don't agree. I think people are just trying to find things to nitpick at the moment. Yeah. There's, there's such little. And look, myself and Weapons Grade have been there. We've been harsh critics, but there comes a point where you just have to say this is this is good. Just try this out, because if you're asking Halo to innovate for Halo Infinite. But then you're so against Halo 3, Reach 2, CE, 4 even, innovating. Like, I, I don't understand. I really don't understand it. Like, imagine some of the Halo 4 maps. Once mod support comes in, imagine playing Halo 3 and some of the Halo 4 maps. It might actually mm. make some of them quite good. Right. Right. Imagine, imagine making a game mode where scarabs are attacking you or you can play multiplayer with a scarab. Hmm. You know what I mean? It could like, be cool, yeah. Mod, Instead mod, of the elephant, two tools, scarabs coming at each other. Mod, that could be. Mod tools open the box up. You know yeah. what I mean? They they change things. Like you can you can have interesting possibilities, and in you can probably put what AI in, in there somehow. And I'm sure so. I'm sure someone smarter than us that knows everything about coding. <laughs> also, yeah. once they put that up there, once they once they give us the mod tools, people will end up fixing gaping holes in the code for you 343 that's what happened with battlefield 4 the fans went in and helped dice to fix the code as quickly as they could because they loved the game they loved what was there they just needed the tweaks to make sure it was balanced to make sure the net code was was obviously not dropping this is uh, this is something that's totally at your uh, it's uh, it's in your fingers it's uh, it's in your hands yeah. excuse me it's in your hands right now 343 you just need to pull the trigger on it and, and i think that they do deserve some criticism for saying, well, it's co- MCC is coming to PC, it's going to have mod tools. They need to start announcing these things and, and hyping these things up, these features that don't make their way into the game for two, three years. They need to start hyping them up right before they actually come into the game because you're, you're going to start... P- 
pissing people off. That's the, the only way I can say it. You're going to piss people off by not having these things come into the game within a year or so of launch. It's like Forge for Halo 5. It came in far too late to the game. It didn't launch with it. You need They need to start being a bit more honest and pulling back on announcing features if they can't deliver upon them because they're just going to shoot themselves in the foot. Yeah, I, I agree. Even when they were adding the collection to the PC, I, I often wondered, I'm like, how many guys are behind this whole project and is this going to impact Infinite? And then the pandemic happened and then what do yeah. you know? Yeah. And I'm just like, wow. So, And now they're, I guess, delaying, I guess, the custom games browser from what I've kind of read on the blog post is it's going to release like at the end of 2021 now instead of you know in the middle or beginning like they were kind of reaching for or hinting at. So that that is kind of disappointing. Um, it is because Infinite will be out. So yeah, are people and, going and to makes forget you wonder, about MCC? That's my. Well, it makes you wonder theory. again. You're like, well, okay, are they, they're really juggling all these projects again? You know, but yeah, I heard they're hi they're on a hiring spree now, but I don't know. You know what I mean? It it yeah. seems a little shaky to me. I, I really hope they get it under control. But that's that's I really the main think... thing. They need to just keep delaying Infinite if they can't if they can't deliver upon the promise that they made. They need to take yeah. more time because I think it was the I think it was was it the CEO of Nintendo at some point that said, you know, a game that launches broken will forever be known as that. But a game that's delayed and releases property will will at least be respected. He said something to the effect of that. I'm sure someone smarter than me that has more knowledge of the industry will be able to quote that directly in the comment section. But that's, I believe that the CEO of Nintendo uh, said something to that effect, that release your games functional. Make sure that you're respecting your community because people are, now with Infinite, people are not gonna be putting money down, uh, which, which really brings a, a bit of fear into the mix that they could go anywhere with this game. They could really do whatever they, they want to uh, without any repercussions because it's going to be a free to play multiplayer. But I think they really owe Halo fans at this point uh, a decent title that's well supported that has all the core features at launch um, and I think MCC deserves that as well for years we've been we've been carried and sticked with this uh, with this custom browser and it should just come out just release the custom browser and let the community yeah. build whatever game types maps etc that they want I'm telling you Halo it's gonna it, it'll make it will revive itself it's starting yeah. to revive itself currently it, it's already starting yeah like like we were saying it MCC already has a higher population than Halo 5 on the Xbox alone, not even counting crossplay. Yep. Right? When you count crossplay, it's already bigger. Yep. And crossplay, it's awesome. That's how me and Rooney, I'm playing on the Series X, Rooney on his PC. Yep. We've been, we play today for like three, four hours, ranked invasion, the whole nine yards. With our mics like as the, well. With, uh, you, with you, in game chat. Yeah, you, yes. you, you, could, you should cover this. I think this is uh, something oh, that you're yeah, passionate yeah. about. So, so this is pretty cool. Um, well, Kind of. Recently, um, I was just reading about sort of proximity chat, and I was thinking, you know, why did that sort of get axed um, in the making of MCC? You know, back in the day, Halo 3, Halo 2, even I think some of Reach had um, proximity chat, where you can, you know, sneak by and it, um, real quiet, and then, you know, if somebody's next to you, they can hear your mic, and then they know you're there, and then they can kill you. Mm. Or death chat, where if you kill somebody, you can hear their voice or reaction for like three seconds, kind of like um, Call of Duty Warzone and Modern Warfare does. It's cool. Um, those were really cool quality of life features that I was kind of disappointed when I'm, you know, going into the game chat settings in MCC. Three four three seemed to be the opposite of that sort of social interaction. You know what I mean? Like I, I guess. They changed the default settings in MCC now to where, you know, if you're fresh on MCC, new player, freshly installed, your game chat isn't set to be able to talk to players. You have to set it manually. It's like a hidden feature now. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of found that. Did you Did you have any... What do you think, Ronnie? No, I, I loved... I absolutely, back in the day, loved having the... Uh, especially in social modes, having the push to talk. Yeah. I loved that. There was, there, there's one moment that sticks out in my head where... You know the rock on Valhalla just below the Spartan laser? That big rock? Well, a guy was hiding below there. He was communicating with his team, telling him, telling mm. them that myself and my friend were coming for him. All I heard was, there's two guys by the... And then we hit him in the back. 
two guys by the holy shit and it was that moment i remember one of the first times that i properly burst out laughing playing halo and it's it's unforgettable in my mind uh, and i and even today we like let's let's be let's be truthful to the audience we went in and we made it our mission to talk as much shit as we could just to see what people would say and we had a good time we had a good we had a laugh blast. yeah it was so much a fun blast. it's like the, it's like the old days so i think people need to be less afraid of interacting with people online also if people start talking shit to you on halo don't worry about it they're just trying to have fun they're just trying to grief you um this is exactly how it was back in jesus back as far back as 2004 with halo 2 this is exactly what the online climate was like and it's something that i miss quite a lot man actually it's on on pc at the moment i play games that require people to talk to each other like these military sim games because i miss that it's so quiet online these days and i miss yep. that and halo was the first game where where i really experienced a, a very active population of people that just wanted to to chat to one another or to talk smack or just even have their mic on as they're talking to someone in the room and see if someone was going to mess with them and then they talk shit back it was such a cool environment to i guess exactly. grow up as a gamer and it, it can come back again but 343 i i agree with i agree with you weapons grade they need they, to have they're, like they're not they're not they're not making a right like why would you make it harder to it's like they're suppressing the communication function mm. you know what i mean i do it'd be, it'd be like it'd be like if i made a bunch of rules for people to go vote like voter suppression you know what i mean yeah. like just an example um they're, 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 you have to go out of your way to turn on this feature and you can essentially if you set it to all like we did you can talk to even the enemy team oh it was it's amazing it's absolutely yeah, so amazing you can you can literally in mcc if you go in big team battle you can talk to all 16 players and you know, one of the other days some guy was doing it and he was literally talking to me calling me out saying oh weapons read i see you camping back there and he's sniping at me and i'm like oh he, this how's he talking to me and that's when i found out and did a little research that this is kind of in there you yeah. know what i mean it it's it's already built in so it's pretty cool this so is, this is so we interesting and, yeah you know, we for, went through for and, the future of halo yeah yeah um also rooney i wanted to bridge off here um we were talking about infinite hmm. on um xbox one before this yes. discussion yes the cyberpunk um, I, know, I know in the beginning yeah we yeah, we mentioned cyberpunk and how that whole thing. I guess the concern here, and what I've heard, I guess, is that MCC, or not MCC, Infinite, um, would not be launching on the Xbox One, or they're, they're, they're talking, like, should it launch on the Xbox One, like the original? Um, will it hurt the game? Will it, is it maybe the reason why it looks the way it does now? Or yeah. back in? What do you think? So, every new Xbox has had a new Halo game come out with it. So, if you're looking at the first Xbox, the original Xbox, Halo CE and Halo 2. Halo 3 then came out in the Xbox 360. MCC we got on the Xbox One. I think, and, and obviously Halo 5. It makes sense to put it onto the, new, onto the next gen console. This is the new era of Halo. If you want 10 years of Halo, you're not going to do that with the equivalent of a GTX 660 video card in an Xbox One. You're not going to do it. And nope. it, this is just straight facts here. This isn't trying to say people are people who are going to be left behind. And they made promises, and they're going to break this. I think they're going to break this promise. If if you're following what's happened with Cyberpunk 2077, because the Polish government have invested in Cyberpunk, if they don't deliver upon their patches before DLC, I think they're going to be fined 10% of their taxable income for 2020. Yep. Which is, that's a shitload of money. So, a Microsoft, will, a Microsoft has in the past gotten away with releasing broken products. You can't do it this time because you are going to lose your player base. You're going to lose your player base if you do that with Infinite. I personally, and this is coming from someone who's spent a lot of money on a rig, uh, and I'm trying to understand the other perspective. I, I understand why 
someone would want Halo Infinite to release on the, the Xbox One. They don't want to be left behind, they don't want to upgrade their hardware, etc. But on the other hand, it, if you do upgrade your, if you just make that decision to upgrade your hardware, and if they make the decision to say, look, this can only run on upgraded hardware, it will be better off in the long term. You don't want anything else that, that can be seen as a red mark against Halo happening. We just don't want that happening. There's been too many falls and it looks like now, listen to the two of us, we're more positive than we've ever been in these talks about the direction of Halo. Yep. I don't want to yep. see anything bring it back down again and I think releasing it on, on the previous gen would be a gross miscalculation. Yeah, I, I certainly agree and I, I think Cyberpunk shows us clearly, you know what I mean? Just the, just the mass toll, think about it, of working on how many consoles at one time, what, four, five? Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, for them, it'd be one less for kids you are not working on PlayStation, but you get my point, you mm. know what I mean? Yeah, the original Xbox consoles, you're adding the, the One X and the One, sure they can scale just like PC, but you know you gotta build for that console in mind. What, I agree. What is that gonna limit in terms of not only you know, player spaces, how many people can be in the lobby, load times, we're talking potentially game game changing mechanics. Yes, it, you know it, what I mean? it is game changing. It really is. It's from, if you look from at the CPU particle effects to explosions to the, everything from the graphics and yeah. To it, to parts of the map to assets on the map rendering in, you know, at, yeah. at high frame rates. So when you when you saw the infinite reveal it, it was obvious. It was very obvious that half the map was was unable to load in at the same rate that what what at whatever someone was looking at the you know I guess the the twenty meters in front of their face, everything else outside of it was like phasing in and out and you don't want to see that and that's what happens when you have older hardware. There's a game on PC Not called Squad and that happened to me with my previous rig. I was getting forty five frames and half the map was barely loading in because there was so much for there was so much to render in. And yeah. I don't want to see that happen with Infinite. That's why I upgraded my hardware so I'd have a better experience. It's just mm -hmm. the way it is, guys. Like, hardware jumps so quickly. The 4 Series, the 3 Series of cards are all sold out at the moment on PC. But the 4 Series is rumored to release in two years. This is how mm -hmm. fast, this is how fast gaming is evolving. So you, you need to, I, I believe that they need to make a decision. To say, they, they have to just make a hard decision to say we made a promise, we're breaking the promise maybe provide some kind of incentive to people uh, to sell their consoles maybe if you go in and you sell your console at a Microsoft store, right. you get a, a discounted uh, you get a, a, higher, a higher discounted um, price off an Xbox One whatever whatever the new ones are called the Series X or I, I, I'm really yeah. not following for these consoles because I'm, I'm so far away from that now that I have the PC but I think you should either build a PC or you should get one of these better Xboxes if you're going to if you're going to stick with Halo. You'll have a better experience guaranteed. I I, I definitely went for the because I I don't have a gaming PC as of right now, but I invested in the Series X, um, and I love it so far. And Good. It's pretty power. It's pretty powerful. Um, the only thing is, there's not a lot of games right now. And there you go. You <laughs> that's wait. probably why I'm. That's probably why I'm playing Halo, huh? That's it. That's it, but it's it's in your blood. It's in it's in both of our bones. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of I there's a song um by Kid Cudi that just came out called Another Day, and there, the there chorus goes, "Thank God, um, it's all another day," and what he means is I'm still the same person. You know, my last because he made it, his last album he made was like 13 years ago. He's like I'm still the same person. It's just another day. Yeah, 15 years later. You know what I mean? I I took a break from Halo. It's just another day. That's it. I've, I've taken to... long breaks, six, seven, eight months, and it always pulls me back in somehow. So it's just, like, like you said, it's about making the next Halo the best it can be on the best hardware that it can run on. Um, so that's, I think that's extremely, extremely important that they mm -hmm. don't fall into this, uh, this cyberpunk syndrome. Also, the art, like I know you were mentioning this to me beforehand, that the art of 4, 5, and Infinite, it's not as... It's not cons if you look at four that that photo that you that you sent yeah. me on Twitter. This this needs to be talked about mm. because I'm I'm kind of perplexed here. I don't know if I have the same set of eyeballs that everybody else does on the <laughs> internet because when they see or when I see this image of um, that Spartan semi sprinting wearing the Halo Reach 
armor, that image. I'll probably put it up in the video or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it literally, the art style looks just like Halo 5. And I, I'm kind of confused because, well, at least the map, like it looks like, um, I can't even remember, it's so forgettable. That one map in Halo 5, um, Riptide or mm -hmm. whatever, it looked just like that. And I, I was kind of like disappointed because I'm like, isn't this supposed to be a showcase of huge, bombastic, explosive features and like it isn't Halo's the, your biggest IP? Why are we, why are we not innovating and moving in the in, in the right? Why are we just going off of Halo Five? It looked literally. Mm. Did, did you see Halo Five in there? Like I, I it looked I know like a lot Halo of Five. Did. Yeah, yeah. And I know a like, lot of people on Twitter, especially, are, are linking those images alongside some of the, the images of Faux Hammer, that guy, or not Faux Hammer, Bro Hammer, they're calling him. And, and saying, look how beautiful this game looks. And, and fair enough, they're allowed to have their opinion, but there's really nothing that separates it, like you were saying, from Halo 5. Nothing yet, anyway. We haven't really seen anything that that, that really hits hits you in the face and you'll say, wow. Um, wow. So, and they really need to, they need to do that. The next time wow. that they release anything to do with Halo Infinite, this has to be monumental. This has to and capture the audience's hearts. I don't even know what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> ah, that's okay. Well, uh, but we can we can push on anyway um, to, okay. to to some topics that I wanted to talk about, which uh, are kind of branch out from this whole Halo Infinite uh, MCC topic. But it's just a general Halo topic about grenades. Uh, so we were discussing this at one time about uh, grenades sound different across the different titles. And then at the same time as we were discussing this, the community on Twitter were discussing, should you start with one grenade or two grenades? Um, and also, which type of grenade should you should you start with? You know, they're, they're vastly different between each title. Halo 2, uh, CE, they're like fucking nukes. Uh, Halo 3, they're far less explosive. Reach, they're far more explosive because, you know, you have to break shields and uh, whittle someone's health down. Their health bars down so what do you think on that should it be one or two which type yeah um so first of all i think i think my favorite grenade personally was it's definitely halo 3 hands down mm. um reach reach is good too um twos are fun but a little bit too much but threes is definitely my favorite being that i think it's the most balanced you know two is i think the perfect caliber of grenade mm. um and also it was cool that you could carry two of six right so you yeah. had like the fire grenade spike grenade which again was really cool i don't know why they would degress in that area and make less grenades you know what i mean yeah no i think they've but, balanced them differently depending on the mechanics in each game uh, yeah so you're, um, so you're looking at halo 2 but, everyone had a, well, yeah. a hit scan br compared to the well, the projectile in halo 3 so obviously the grenade had to be had to be a, a little bit less right. powerful with with halo 3 the grenades um I think it's the way you throw them too. It's like they're, I want to say more, they're more floaty. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, whereas in like, for instance, Halo Five, maybe it looks, it feels like you're throwing a rock. Yeah, yeah, no, like, I agree with that. Yeah, it, there's some weight even, even to the way, grenades in Halo. Even 3. the way, yeah, the weight, the way it sounds, the way it clanks off the wall, it goes like. And it just I think that's down. a symptom of Halo 5 being just so fucking fast. Like it's just so fast. There's and it really is a twitch it's it's verging on a twitch shooter. It's an arena slash twitch shooter at the same time. Yeah. It kind of marries those two styles. And right. like I, I've been very vocal, and so have you that I, I'm not a fan of Halo 5. I don't like it. Um, I think it just it deviates away from what made Halo great with all these abilities. But the grenades definitely suffered as a result that people you could just thrust out of the way of the grenade, uh, no problem, you know, really no problem. You could clamber out of the way, etc. Whereas in in Halo Three, especially when you threw that grenade and you knew you had someone pinned, uh, even just like some shards from the grenade could severely like just strip your shield. Um, yeah, Reach was it was so different. I think the grenades were so powerful in Reach. Uh, because you have you have more vehicles, you have all these different armor abilities, especially armor lock, um, the you know the shield. That there were so many different ways to to kind of BS on someone with the different abilities that you needed you needed something powerful in your in your starting roster, I guess, uh, to make sure that you could deal with with something um, in, in your own way. Yeah, one of my one of my favorite things. Oh crap! Uh, you drop your mic. <laughs> Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, I was gonna say one of my favorite things about the grenades in Halo Three, especially, is how bouncy they are on walls. Mm. Um, so for I, for some reason, Halo Five, when, when I feel like I throw the grenade at the wall, from what I remember, it just it wouldn't clank or wouldn't go where I wanted it to go. Like mm. if you throw a, a grenade at Halo Three at the wall, you know, you know it'll go behind you, behind your shoulder if a guy's pushing you. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. There's can, a fair bit of bounce on them as well. And, and because this, because there's no sprint, you can you can play cat and mouse almost like bring around the rosy and use the grenades as like a. It, it really shows how like the slower gameplay really helps with the, with the grenade balance. It does. I yeah. think it, it mixes really well. You put a lot you know, of. It's almost like a game of chess rather than. So yeah, it's it's more your 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 positioning is more. You know, it's more important because you can't just sprint a sprint away, or like you said, thrust away from a grenade. Or yeah, well, a, wow, gren a grenade whatever. buys you one second, one or two seconds right. of of time to to get the hell away from whatever's happening to you. Um, and I, I agree with that. That Halo Five has different balance. It's like shoot, shoot, clamber, jump, uh, use your little jetpack thing to get to you know a power weapon. Throw two grenades, like grenade, grenade. Then it's it's mm -hmm. way too fast. Whereas in Halo Three, it'd be Okay, watch this area. Watch this area. Watch this area. There's a guy here. He shot me twice. Okay, back down. His like yep. wait, wait to see if his grenade lands in. Okay, his grenade didn't land in. He's going around this corner. Oh no, there's someone behind me. Throw a grenade at the wall. Maybe spin around and try and clean up the kill if they've run into the grenade, or just see. Okay, my grenade deterred them from following me. I have an extra second to escape. Get my shield. Fight for a power weapon. Reposition. You're right. It, there's a lot more thought that goes into it. It's it's a lot more like what Halo is based on, really. It, it's right. a gameplay loop of, of being quite like chess, which is why its ranking systems are very like chess, the ELO systems seen in chess. Um, I I, to I completely agree with that. Yeah. I, I That was very well said, Rooney. Very well said. I completely agree. It's like, it's like I, I never knew, I never knew about the chess else. there. It is, yeah. The ELO systems are, are based on chess systems. Uh, I didn't so know like that. like the fifteen hundred point kind of system that if you were to win against someone that has seventeen hundred elo, then it treats it like an upset win, and then you have more points given to you, and then they have more points taken away from them. Um, years, years, and years ago, I think in two thousand fourteen slash fifteen, um, I did a I did a video on the differences between the true skill system and the elo system seen in Halo Two, uh, MCC, and Halo Five. Halo Five is a uh, so Joshua Menke, who, who developed the, the StarCraft II system, was a lot of people know him as the guy that developed the, uh, the matchmaking systems, the, the, the rank mm -hmm. systems in Halo 5 and MCC. Um, so he bases his divisions off chess ELO systems, uh, which is it's kind of a standardized uh, ranking system in games. Whereas Halo 3 had a, a totally different one. It was just a predictor of, are you going to win? If you won the game, it, it was then one win goes towards your rank and you need a certain amount of wins to hit the next level that's how hmm. it's done that's why people could de-rank in halo 3 uh, because they could they could de-rank so much and have so many losses against them that if you were to win uh, you had a if you were to play with someone who was a de-ranker you had a much higher chance of ranking up because their predictor was set so low that you had so many points allotted towards you once you won so that's why some people could get 50s in like 25 games back in the day yeah, I back in the day, I don't even think I got to fifty. I did. I got to like forty. I got, I got there once, <laughs> <laughs> and then I never played doubles again. <laughs> it was, yeah. Oh, you got it in doubles. I got it in doubles first, and then I got up to forty-eight in Slayer, uh, but I was playing fifty high the entire time. Uh, it was really fun. Wow. I got a forty-five in Team Objective. I was pretty happy with that. Wow. Yeah, I I, I think I'm. My highest was in doubles and then lone wolves. Lone wolves, I had like a 40 or something. I had like a 45 in, in, in lone I think if you got a 45 in lone wolves, you can handle yourself in Halo. Uh, but my, my girlfriend will tell you that uh, when, when I was younger, she's been with me for a long time, that, uh, man, I, I just, I, <laughs> people used to slag me. I used to not go out drinking with friends because I'd stay inside and uh, play Halo on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and try and try and get my rank up. It was it was so addictive, so so addictive. Um, Since you were on the topic Rooney, of skill based matchmaking, I thought this was a little interesting, and I, I think we can leave it off at this last topic. And yeah, yeah. Um, 
skill-based matchmaking. I guess there's a big, a big critique lately in the Halo community. MCC skill-based matchmaking. Well, I guess recently in the last update they added skill-based matchmaking to social. Mm. So, um, kind of to get rid of the pub stomping going on in the community right now. I guess if you get on MCC, you play a game of Team Slayer on big team, there's about maybe a 30% chance, give or take, that you're going to be, be pub stomped, essentially. Yeah. Like, um, earlier today, we faced it. What? That one, we, we still came back, but... Yeah. We, um, that guy had, like, 32 kills, and his... He was complaining about the skill-based matchmaking to us. Yeah. He was saying the MMR is so high, and my teammates are so bad. And yeah. It really... It can ruin the experience, because if the games are just so one-sided, it's not fun getting shitted on over and over and over again. So just just for right. everyone to have some context, I'll include the gameplay of uh, of exactly what weapons grade is is describing in in my video. Um, you, you'll see anyway that one of the first we played a game of of sh shoddy snipers uh, on Citadel on mm -hmm. Halo Three, and we won by I think it was two kills, um, and it was just us two against four people. There was one player who was godlike. He was godlike. He had a 35 in Halo 3, which is very, very hard to get with the Halo 2 ELO system. Very hard to get. This guy would be a titan in a lobby. Whereas his teammates all got four kills apiece, I think. So they were essentially yeah. just feeding our kills. This guy would turn corners and dome us. It was ridiculous. Um, we barely won. Now, we communicated well, but we barely won. Um, and it, it really does... I think it does say something about the matchmaking system that... There's not. A, I think there's not enough people playing. Back in the day, this would not have mattered. If there was 500,000 yeah. people playing, this guy would have been matched evenly against people that were at his skill level. Um, if he went into social, yeah, he would have pub stomped the shit out of people. Uh, but I, I think it is, and a lot of people have discussed this with Joshua Menke on, on Twitter about the SBMM. Uh, yeah. I, and he, he's, very, right now... he's very, very honest about it. I have to give it to Josh that he, uh, he really interacts well with the community. He's very respectful. Um, he just seems very passionate about what he does and it's he's very polite and he explains things to people that are going insane at him insulting him um, I think that I think part of his his his, his background um, yeah uh, is uh, is is that he's, he's had a lot of experience with this with different games with Starcraft especially he would have been able to perfect this system and that it really is just a player it's a player issue not enough people are playing um, to to warrant uh, how strict the system is, um, right? You know, it's like Call of Duty. Like there was this hilarious clip I saw Call of Duty where uh, this, this guy says, uh, "You know, I'm ready for the next game, Call of Duty Matchmaker. How many kills did you get last game? Twenty and five. You went twenty and five. Congratulations, you just went pro. <laughs> it's <laughs> so it's it's that kind of system that it doesn't it doesn't at least it's not as bad as COD, but it, it can definitely be it can definitely oh be it's not yeah. It, it can definitely be improved. I, I certainly agree. You know, it's not the end of the world. Um, it's definitely better, but it's it's it could be improved. Yeah. You know, um, and I, I think that's going to be an important thing to improve as the game sort of slowly, 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 slowly grows, because um, it would contribute to that growth in itself, right? Mm. You know, you don't want people leaving because they're getting crapped on over and over and over again. And that that is on the way. Yeah. Yeah, you go on the waypoint forums, I guarantee you, you'll find at least one or two people complaining about the skill-based matchmaking or the quitters. And why do people quit? Yeah, because, because they, they get destroyed. Because they're not having fun. Because yeah. they're getting destroyed. We were, we were about to quit earlier because two of our teammates quit, and we weren't having fun. I was like, Roni, let's step it up, man. And we won. We came yeah, back. Yeah, he, he said it. I, I, <laughs> I mentioned, I said, we should probably quit because there's no penalty now. Uh, but he said, no, let's step it up. And yeah, we ended up winning and communicating and kind of playing off each other. And it's people aren't going to do that, though, if they don't have the passion um, for for Halo. If they're going in and they, they think to themselves, there's no way I'm going to start no scoping people with a sniper. They're right. they're just not going to want to play the game again. So I think some of these people are, are at that stage of like, um, OK, how do these controls work? How do I mm. throw grenades? And then they're getting crapped on by Twitch TV Master Chief. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, 117XXX <laughs> Leash. Like it's <laughs> Arbiter Arbiter <laughs> Prophet 5. <laughs> exactly. It's they're not going to enjoy it, which actually it can kind of herald back to our our point about the custom games browser that 
if there was just a customs games browser, they could jump into that like a you know a really sweaty like sniper game. Uh, if they didn't like it, they could jump into something like Griffball. You know, without yeah. any kind the, of penalty. The custom game browser will be revolutionary. It will be for because MCC. it's about the penalization um, of people when they play in Halo. If they're not enjoying themselves, they leave a the game. They can get banned for ten minutes from playing. If they quit again, they get banned for a day. That's it's not good. It's not good, especially with the community being as hardcore as it is. Um, I barely play ranked anymore because I just don't want to go in and get absolutely by myself. Searching by yourself sucks in Halo at the moment. It really mm -hmm. does. I don't want to get slapped around. So a custom games browser where I could go in, you know, do a sniper BR, warm myself up, then go into ranked would be amazing. Without, and if I wanted to leave and I wasn't enjoying myself and I, I came to the conclusion 20 minutes after booting up Halo that, you know, I'm just not in the correct mindset today to play this game. I'm going to jump right. off. I would rather not get penalized and have a way of playing socially, like a true social experience that's not tied um, to, you know, their, their quit or their ban system. Uh, I think that yeah. the play, the, the, honestly, the custom games browser uh, and mod tools are going to change everything once it comes out. I, um, I, 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 I truly do believe that. And I, I think, too, just building on, we were talking about like chat functionality and settings and prox chat and all that. Um, just imagine with custom game settings how yeah. that's going to sort of just launch a new era of um, social interaction within the Halo community. Yeah, people you will clown I mean? up like, again. That's people yeah, will people 100 percent climb build, up again. Build forge maps again. Well, what's the point of building a forge map right now if you can't get five other people to get you to play with? You know what I mean? Yeah. There's actually going to be a reason to do things. So yeah, but you can maps. just test your maps out. Just throw it up on the server yeah. and wait until people yeah. start joining and say, "Hey, man, can you help me test this map?" It, it will. Right. It'll provide people new friends. I, I met some great. Fr I went to one of my friends' weddings that I met playing Halo. He lived in Oregon. I'm from Ireland, so. There's, there is that. There's that social element that I have not found with any other game. Um, I've, right. I've started finding it now again with, with PC games, with, with all these military sim shooters, because it has the same type of mindset. It has the same yeah. type of people that just want to have fun and, and get along with people and talk and communicate and have fun, but also take the game seriously and play. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I know we're, we're kind of going on a tangent, but yeah, it's custom games browser. Uh, more communication with push to talk, uh, more options, uh, less penalties for quitting. Um, you know, just just implementing different mods to, to try different game types out that could be absolutely. You could strike gold. You could strike gold yes. with a playlist it, or a map. It's so close. It's yeah. so it, like it. It can happen. I, I know. I can see it. it you know what I mean? It's yeah. It's 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 it's, when the, it's it's within the realm of realism. Let's say that. Yeah. Right. It's it's doable. Three four three. If they really push it out, innovate, push some. In. We're not talking about crazy features. Like we're talking about a custom game browser. Yeah, you know what I mean? exactly. We're not talking about. And they've they've been talking about this for a long time. But if they get on the ball here, and implement this, I think that'd be revolutionary for the MCC. Yeah. That'd be great. Start bringing but players I, I back in. I guess there's gonna be. That's it. I guess there's gonna be like a drought. So they're not accepting like. Um, end of 2021 for the custom game browsers so we're gonna well we've waited for a long time but i guess we'll see we have the season five and all the other crap i think it'll be worth it eventually like it and and something yeah. that i want to touch on before we sign off here is that mm -hmm. uh, for for the longest time i can i can fairly say that at, at least for myself uh, and i won't i won't speak for you on this is that i was critical and i was nearly defeated that nothing was going to change and right. things have started gradually gradually changing and changing and changing and it's not I'm not about to I'm not about to say thank you for everything 343 but they're on the right track and kudos has to be given where kudos is due and it is yeah. it's halo is is on the right track and as long as we all stay honest, stay realistic, and if we don't nitpick tiny little things and focus on the core issues, then we have the right to start bitching about the small little things. But right now, if we focus ourselves on the topics really that we were talking about, I think are some of the most important for MCC going forward. These are the topics that actually matter. Uh, and I think yeah. if, if everyone keeps themselves focused on that, then Halo will keep keep not not might it will keep getting better and better mm -hmm. yeah yeah that was a good way to close up i think Rooney. Yeah. um 
I just wanted to finish off with um, it was a pleasure. As always, um, yeah. I had Me fun. I, I think this was this was a really good talk. Yeah. We, we how long do you think we got? But I won't. we're about uh, I think we're about fifty-ish minutes. So we we've, nice. we've spoken a lot about uh, about some of the topics, guys, and uh, yeah, like just just keep tuned to both of our channels because uh, we've been doing a lot more uh, playing together in in. Yeah. Halo itself, and uh, we're we're having a blast. Like we, right? We have we have I, very I similar wanna... uh, gameplay styles, and it's uh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, I, I want to say you know just um go for it, um go ahead, get on and your PC, your Xbox, hit up your friends and try ranked game setting out, or try you know some social slayer setting. There's some pretty good things on there right now. I know Shoddy Snipers is on, and that's pretty fun. Um, me and Roni playing some of that earlier so yeah. you know give it a try see if uh, it's on fr it's practically free on game pass you know yeah so, <laughs> so jump jump in and if, if you love this if you love this franchise like we do then then jump in give some feedback and it, the game will eventually get better and just we've been so patient guys and we're nearly there we're nearly over the line where I, I really truly believe this i never thought this day would come but it is i need to yeah. eat my words and say that I never thought they'd fix it, but they, they are. They are. Right. And they're listening. They, they seem to be listening. So while they're listening, let's keep their attention centered on MCC. Because once keep Infinite comes in. Yeah, exactly. Communicate. Be, as res be respectful. But if you need to be critical, I would advise you to be critical. But don't do it in a, in a hateful, in a hateful non-productive way. Always have productivity. Right. And don't be, don't be sarcastic, but always have... Always, always have, have substance. Exactly. Substance too. Exactly. You know, it's just something real to complain about. Something. Yeah. You know. We're all angry because of this pandemic. We're all stuck in the house. Um. So and and tensions can get higher, and your emotions on on something could could spiral, at you know infinitely. Like you, you could start you know exact like exactly what I said. They're spiraling on and on and on, and and finding more things that you don't like. But look, just try and bring yourself back to base and say. This is what the reality is. This is where we're going, and things seem to be getting better. So let's just, you know, knock wood. Let's let's hope that it continues that way. <laughs> right. Before All we start right. ranting more. <laughs> yeah. Good talking to you, Ronnie. I'll catch you later. You too, man. All right. Peace. See you.